point is that it can that the thing happened to me in the first place. The whole point is he's sitting there reading this passage in the Bible, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even, even as Christ yeah. as God Christ said he's forgiven you. And then he knows that it's Bob calling up and you won't forgive him. He just walks away. Well that's what I'm saying. <laughs> he would partner called him himself and then he changed his mind. You wouldn't believe how many people go, Well what happened? What Did happened to the phone? <laughs> Scarf said in the prayer the other Sunday, but I don't remember what it was, but I wrote it down on the bulletin and it really threw me. I think she had her tongue mixed up. I 
know she did. I'm sure she didn't even say what she said. <laughs> did you drop yeah. one there, Mark? No, it wasn't me. What was it?
begin the service tonight, and we will ask God's blessing before we go any further. So let's bow for a word of prayer. We're grateful, Father, again, for your goodness. We're grateful that again we can come to your house because of what you have done on our behalf. We thank you, Father, for your person. We thank you for your righteousness, your goodness. We thank you that you are changeless. We thank you that your love has reached even unto our own persons. We pray, Father, that as the young people present the program for our benefit this evening, that we would see you reflected in them. We would commit the service to you. I pray for your blessing upon each part of it. We ask these things in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, you may be seated. If you want to move to the front a little bit more, you're welcome to do so. I'm going to turn the service at this time over to the uh, youth group and ask that they would go ahead and present what they have prepared for our service this evening. I'd like to welcome you all to the evening service tonight. Uh, as you can tell, this isn't the more traditional evening service. The youth, the youth of the church have decided that uh, they would like to share some of their thoughts with you and also help uh, you hopefully in your worship tonight. The theme of our service is centered around worship and we would like to try and show you some of our ideas concerning worship and also allow you to participate hopefully in a worship experience that is not extremely stringent, well, that will hopefully allow a little freedom, yet allow you to worship God individually and corporately as your life allows. But first of all, we'd like to give you a chance to stand up, to stretch a little bit, and uh, we're going to try an activity for you. And Lori will uh, lead you in that activity. Okay, I want everybody to stand up. <laughs> okay, this is the youth service, and that means that you guys do what we want you to do, okay? So everybody make sure you have a lot of room. And follow my directions carefully. Watch everybody up here, because we're going to be trying to do the same thing you're going to be trying to do. I want everybody to take both their arms and stretch them way in front of you like this. Okay, now everybody cross your arms. Fold your hands and roll your hands up like this. Now you see that little hole right there? Not the big one down here, the little one? Everybody try to stick your head through it. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Might not be able to, come on. <laughs> okay, that's going to do bad. <laughs> Keep working on it though. If you feel the urge, you can stand up and try to do it. <laughs> But tonight, um, we've got like a play and stuff, and the whole time we're not going to be able to use mics, so you're not, probably not going to be able to hear us real well. 
So we want everybody to come up, move as close to the front as you can, okay? Because we're not real good at yelling, most of us aren't, some of us are. <laughs> but everybody move forward, all right? That's when we were on tour. And the words are really special. And one of the special phrases is, you gave me life and you made my spirit new, so I'm going to give you all my life. And I think that's really important to us because Jesus gave his life for us and the very least we could do was to give him our life. And so I hope you really listen to this song. my testimony. It's, I know a few of you have heard it before, but it's really kind of special. Um, you know, I've been a Christian since I was five, and, you know, I just kind of drifted along and coasted. never did anything that was meaningful to God, and I never really gave him my whole life. And the summer at camp, um, it was Tuesday, it was, you know, right at the beginning of the week, um, a friend of mine, a very dear friend, um, that was in caravan, gave her testimony, and it was the same kind of problem I had of committing my life totally to God, and then she had a really struggle with it, and um, with the way she had talked made it made me realize, and I was under such a conviction that I'd never seriously given my life to God. And the message of the camp preacher that night was on the power of the Holy Spirit. And I can testify that the Holy Spirit has a lot of power because he worked really hard on me. And that night we had some free time. And I was just wandering around thinking and praying. 
and I went over and sat down on third base of the baseball diamond and committed my life to God. And the rest, every day that week, I had to commit my life to God anew because I had a lot of problems. And on Thursday, the day we went to Valley Fair, I asked God specifically to let me share my faith with somebody at Valley Fair. And you know, I did. You know, I didn't come up to somebody and shake them by the shoulders and tell them they had to repent or anything. But I just let somebody know that I was a Christian, you know, just a kind of a way, because God knew that I wasn't ready to, you know, lead somebody to him. But he knew that I could let somebody know that I was a Christian. And it was kind of, it was really special because I knew that God was there and he would answer my prayers. And since camp, I have had a lot of problems. And it's still hard for me to commit myself to God every day because I know I have to sacrifice myself and I have to give every part of me. And it's kind of neat that I know that I'm in God's will and doing what he wants me to do because of my problems. I know that because if I wasn't, Satan would just leave me alone and not bother me. But because I'm having these problems, I know without a shadow of a doubt that I'm doing God's will. And every day I have to give my life to him. And I hope you all do too because it's really neat. And just have to give your life totally to God, even though it's hard. Thank you, Cindy. We'd like to have a time tonight when we can all have a time together sharing, of expressing the opportunities that God has given to us, the, the things that God has done for us that we can have an opportunity to thank him for, and also the needs that we have been struggling with that God has helped us overcome or that even now we are still struggling with and that we can't see the end to, but yet we can feel God's presence and God's strength there. But before we do that, we'd like to sing a couple choruses. And these are choruses, both of which I believe the youth group learned at camp and uh, we'll try to teach to you now. Um, the first course we're gonna attempt to teach you is really, is really pretty easy because the part that you guys will have to sing only has two words. <laughs> okay. Um, the part that might be a little bit difficult for you is clapping. <laughs> and um, so we're just gonna we're gonna drill you on the clapping here at first. Okay. The clapping goes like this. Think you can handle that? <laughs> no, it's not. That's right. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> Never mind. There we go. We're doing. <laughs> okay, so um, the chorus is called He's Alive, okay? And um, we sing he, He's Alive. And we sing that four times. Then we're going to sing a verse, sing it four more times, then a verse, and four more times and fade out, okay? So we'll sing the chorus for you first, and then we want you to join in on it, all right? Then we'll sing a verse, then you guys come back in on the chorus, we'll sing a verse and come back in on the chorus, okay? Go ahead. <laughs>
another song um, that we'd like to do, I think you guys, a lot of you know, because we've, we've sung it before. It's um, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Glory, Alleluia, and that's repeated. And then we sing Jesus, Prince of Peace, Glory, Alleluia, and that's repeated, okay? It's sung and around. So we're going to go through and sing both parts of it first to refresh your memories, and then we'll divide you up and try to sing it in around, okay? Let's try it first. <laughs> King of kings and Lord of lords, glory, alleluia. King of kings and Lord of lords, glory, alleluia. Jesus, Prince of Peace, glory, alleluia. Jesus, Prince of Peace, glory, alleluia. Okay, let's try to divide him down the middle. I think we go right in between Debbie Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> Left side of your mouth sings that way. <laughs> Okay, so right down the middle, we'll start out, Martha, you want to lead these guys? Thanks. Sure. <laughs> you guys start out with King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and then when they start Jesus, then we start King of Kings. Okay, we'll sing it through three times. Okay. King of Kings and Lord of Lords, glory, hallelujah. King of Kings and Lord of Lords, glory, hallelujah. Jesus. Thanks for uh, taking the time to learn those courses. The second course, especially, you probably noticed, had a bit of a Hebrew background to it. And Hebrew songs, I think, are very demonstrative of the sort of awe that the Hebrew people had of God, the respect, the fear of the Lord that is talked about in the Old Testament and I think is fulfilled in the New Testament in our understanding of God's relation to us. And uh, when we think of of a respect or a fear of God, we can really begin to understand what it means to worship God because that, I believe, is where worship for God begins is when we learn to fear and respect Him. We'd like to open up the time now for sharing from any of you. As, again, as I mentioned before, you can share about anything you'd like to. Uh, if you have anything that you are extremely thankful for that the Lord has done for you maybe this summer, uh, thankful for that the Lord has done for you today, any need that God has specifically addressed and met in your life or any need that you're meeting at the present time. We just ask you to share with that now with, with the rest of us. And we'd ask you to be encouraged to share because we are one body in Christ and we are brothers and sisters in the Lord. And we do have a responsibility not only to God but also to one another, to edify one another and to challenge one another in God. And as a body, as a church of God, I think we can see that Sharing is part of that responsibility. Hi, I, I'm supposed to share, get up here and share. So I just wanted you all to know how much I appreciated this church and especially the youth group because, well, since we've come here, the youth groups encouraged me so much and I really feel that I've grown since coming here. And. I just wanted to praise the Lord for this church because it's got I don't, so many people that are so encouraging and they, they really give you the strength to live for the Lord. Okay, does anybody else want to share or give a testimony? We could uh, start the God Bless routine and have uh, certain people of the audience picked and uh, 
force them to do that, but we, we you know, don't want to put any pressure on anybody, so uh, if you think that you have a good chance of being picked, you might as well get up now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, one thing I guess I'd like to share quickly is that um, this summer I've been spending the summer, I guess, quite differently than I'd originally planned. I didn't end up working all summer. I counseled a couple of camps, and I uh, worked for about six weeks uh, as a carpenter, and I have just taken some time off this last month to prepare for this coming year. I'll be senior at Bethel College. But I've really asked the Lord to address a number of issues in my life this summer, and I've seen him continually address those and really give me a lot of insight into my life that I didn't have. And I appreciated that, and I really needed that. And uh, one area that I was certainly concerned about is that in being a senior at college, you graduate, and what do you do with the philosophy and speech communications double major? <laughs> it's, uh, you know, you can go out and get a job, but what do you do? I uh, really prayed to God to give me a piece about what it was that he had in line for me, what it was that he wanted me to do after I you know, got out of college. If he wanted me to try and work for a while, if he wanted me to try and go to graduate school, if he wanted me to, uh, you know, go into missions, whatever, I was trying to be open, but yeah, I didn't really have any specific idea. And God has given me a real peace to someone, I think, given me a discernment into myself to show me that we can spend a lot of time, it seems, preparing for what God has for us, and that oftentimes we sometimes act before we are fully prepared or before God has fully worked in our lives. And I look at spending, you know, two, three, four, five more years in school as a, a bit much, and it seems like well, I should be out doing something. I should be using my life for God. I should be working in a church. I should be, you know, doing missions. I should be out in the workforce and doing something. And yet the thought has really been impressed on my mind that God wants us to be prepared first before we try and go out and do his work. Because if we do his work on our own or if we try and, and do, by, do it by our own strength, we're often not successful. And so I've just been given a real peace about spending two or three or four or even five years in school, maybe uh, possibly working, whatever, just as a time of preparation. You know, I look at Christ's life, and he spent 30 years preparing. And certainly during that 30 years, he didn't touch other people's lives. He you know, spent a lot of time touching other people and impressing other people. But yet he didn't begin his real ordained ministry until he was 30 years old. And then after three years, he was complete. And yet that short time has changed the world. And for me, my aspirations aren't quite as high. <laughs> but uh, I certainly want to be able to be prepared before God does send me in whatever he has prepared for me. But with that all, and my sharing and encourage any of you to share any of the thoughts that you might have. The Lord says that we should bear one another's burdens. And I think many of you know the Beatties, Elmer and uh, the Bird Beatty. I found out this afternoon that their new three month week old grandson.
but uh, I've just been uh, watching the, the farmers bring in the sheaves, and uh, I was over watching again Myron and Roger bringing in the honey, and I've just really been uh, anticipating what God is going to do for us as a church and individually. Uh, I know that as I've watched God work in the life of my life and the lives of those in my family, uh, I like the Bible says that I have not seen, ear hath not heard, nor hath entered into the heart of man what God hath prepared for those that love him. And I'm really anticipating, with great anticipation and eagerness, what God has prepared for us in the days to come. And uh, not, not only as a church, because I believe that we are going to be harvesting um, in these latter times, a great harvest that God has, has put us out to do. And uh, along with that, not that it's my prime goal or anything, but uh, I'm anticipating what God's going to do in my life. And uh, if what he has done is a prelude to what is to come, which I believe it is for all of us, but as a praise God for what, how much he loves us and how much he's going to do for us even now. I'll be seated. Um, we've got one more song that we learned at camp this year that has really come to mean a lot to us, and it's really, really easy to learn. So we're going to sing through the first 
the first chorus of it. And then we're going to repeat that chorus. We'd like you to join in. And then um, we'll change the words just a little bit and sing it through one more time. The words go like this. In my life, Lord, be glorified, be glorified. In my life, Lord, be glorified today. And then when we change the words, we'll just change it to, In our church, Lord, be glorified. Okay, so we'll sing it through once, and then the next time through, we'd like you to join us. Okay, thanks a lot. That was really good. Um, I'd just like to um, share a little bit right before we, we give you our skit tonight. This skit is one that um, we did while we were on Caravan. And in case you haven't noticed, I, ever since Caravan, I've been really excited because Caravan was just a super fantastic experience for me and for Martha, for all the kids that were involved in it. I'd like to take this opportunity to really thank you for supporting Martha and I as a church. We could really feel your prayer support, and we needed it. And um, it was just really neat to go and, and have two people representing Jamestown in the DBC. And we just had a super spiritual time, and we really appreciate your financial support and your prayer support. And we couldn't have done it without you, so we're just really thankful for that. Um, the play we're going to do is called The Visitors, and it's as you'll find out, it's very exaggerated, and we don't expect that, that this is the way it is in every church. But I think it gives us a humorous look at some of the ways we treat visitors, and I think it also makes a very good point. So I'd really like you to, to pay attention to the message of the play, and I just hope you really enjoy it. Well, Cheryl, here we are in God's house. I just love to fellowship with our brothers and sisters in the Lord. Yes, I know what you mean, Gordon. And the church is so close to our hearts. But you know, the thing that especially moves and blesses me is the way they keep out all the riffraff. I just hate hobnobbing with heathens. That's right. You know, I find it really hard to be friends with people who, well, aren't members of our church. I mean, the only thing we have in common are differences. Well, dear, looks like we have a good view. Well, good morning, Mr. and Mrs. Good morning. Good, morning. good, good to morning. see you. Nice to see you. Oh, look, there's Mrs. Motley. Hi, Mrs. Motley. Hi. That's Mrs. Motley, but I wonder who the other two are. They're undoubtedly the riffraff I was talking about earlier. Oh, I see three good seats right over there. Follow me. There goes our view. Oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> I wonder how much they charge to stamp all brush fires. I brought some visitors with me this morning. We noticed, Mrs. Motley. They're Christians. Oh, well, good morning. Welcome to our church. It's nice to have you. I just knew you weren't the riffraff. No, we're the McMasters. <laughs> Did you hear that, Gordon? They're Gordon, stop fooling with your foot and fellowship a little. But they're hurting. We don't know that. We just met them. No, not them. It's my foot. I've been nursing this corn for four days. 
and three people just stepped all over it. Listen, just give your corn to God and give these people a warm First Church handshake. Well, nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. Bob's employed at the local drugstore. He's a pharmacist. Oh, good. Would you have anything for a throbbing corn? <laughs> <clears throat> By the way, I, I don't believe you mentioned what church you attend. Well, we briefly attended community church. <laughs> How unfortunate. Are you uh, regular members? Uh, no. Are you irregular? <clears throat> oh, with a pharmacist, my husband? Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> Consider transferring your membership to our church. Yeah. See, this church is just a little bit closer to heaven. Closer to God. Closer to people. Closer to the truth. Closer to the Bible. And closer to the golf course. <laughs> you all seem so very close. close. You took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> We're a very close church. Oh, the fellowship is so sweet and beautiful here, isn't it, Gordon? Oh, true, true. You could, you could almost cut it with a meat cleaver. And we so love our visitors. Their, their personalities, their individuality, their needs, their children, their friendship, their horrible backslidden condition. <laughs> If you really want to know where we stand, our statement of faith is printed right on the back of the Sunday bowl. Yes, that's right. It covers everything from salvation, you're probably interested in that, to where you park your car in the visitor's parking lot. Violators are towed away. You know, one thing Cheryl and I want you to feel here is warmth. We want you to feel comfortable and, and right at home here. Gordon's so right. And you said it so beautifully, dear. Thank you. you see, the one thing we really do love you, but see, we want you to feel the, the precious, overwhelming, irresistible, dynamic, and meaningful power of guilt. See, at First Church, our motto is, our love is built on the foundation of guilt. Oh, here's our pastor now. Well, we're so glad to have all of you here this morning. Welcome to the First Church of Metropolis. We're so blessed to have all of you here, and I'm sure there's some visitors out there. <laughs> and we don't want our visitors to feel left out. We want you to feel at home, because this is the happy church on the corner where the doors swing wide to welcome you. Praise God. We like to think of our church as a little heaven on the hill. Amen. So we're going to ask if all you visitors would please remain seated, and all the members of our congregation, please stand up. <laughs> all right. Have a seat. Now to make you feel even more welcome, will, will our visitors stand up? There's a couple out there. Yes, we want you to feel welcome at First Church, because this is the happy church on the corner where the doors swing wide to welcome you. Now if you'll just stand there a minute, one of our members will stick you with our visitor's badge. <laughs> Yes, these are our special visitors' badges. What a testimony. <laughs> now, sir, what is your name? Bob McMaster. And your wife's name? Lori. No, her last name? McMaster. Just checking. <laughs> There's a little first church humor. Now, where are you originally from? Well, right here in town. What, <laughs> what church? Well, we briefly attended community church, but... Please be seated. <laughs> well, it's so good to have visitors with us today. And now let's give a warm welcome to all our brothers and sisters in the Lord. Shall we stand for our ritual of friendship? <laughs> yes, we've already met you visitors. And now for the church theme song, God is Good, the song everyone knows. God is good, God is love, God is good, God is love, that's why we're way down here, and he's way up above. God is good, God is love, God is good, God is love, that's why we're way down here. He's way up above. God Visitors, <laughs> sit. 
And now if you'll take the registration form in front of you and follow along as we fill it out. If you have accepted Christ, please check once. Do not check twice. Twice means you have accepted but need to be counseled. Check also if you're a member, a visitor, or a visiting member. A member who would like to be a visitor, or if a visitor would like to be a member. Or simply if you found yourself in the wrong church. Check your name, age, height, weight, phone, number, Republican or Democrat, your children's name and ages, and the age of your dog and cat for our pet church. And finally, how did you happen to come to the first church? Ministry, radio program, or newspaper ad? Billboard sign or blimp? And if you came to our newspaper ad, just fill out the coupon, which is good for five free services. A little more first church humor. Now you can put your pencils back in the rack. Someone broke their pencil. We buy those pencils with the Lord's money, and we don't want to misuse the Lord's money by breaking the good Lord's pencils, do we? Oh, no, never! Well, I'd love to give a sermon, but I see by the old clock on the wall that it's time to wrap this blessing up. Shall we stand for the doxology? With a happy church upon the hill, where the doors swing wide to welcome you. Amen. You are dismissed. Well, I'm really glad you could come. I have a children's class. I'll see you later. Well, what did you think? Heartwarming, wasn't it? Yes. Well, uh, Mrs. Johnson, may I say something? Why, of course. Now listen up, Gordon. We can share their compliments about our service at the Wednesday evening yeah. prayer service. Well, maybe you should write these down. You ready? <laughs> okay, go ahead. Well, your church has a very nice service, a good, solid doctrine, formal traditions, but an informal approach. My, my, you are observant. Did you get all that going? Solid doctrine, good traditions, informality. Okay, what's next? But it's just not for us. Stop writing, Gordon. <laughs> what I mean is that those things alone are not enough. Church should be more than that. If not, well, you get what you appear to have here. People who say all the right words, but for all the wrong reasons. Gordon, I said stop writing. You see, Mrs. Johnson, we want to grow as Christians. Going to church isn't an end in itself. It's a beginning. I guess what it all comes down to is that our position in Christ demands more than just going to church. It means living our lives through him. Well, shall we go? Mr. Mr. McMaster, thank you for, well, for sharing that with us. Yes, sir. Well, thanks for being so, well, so patient and kind. By the way, what time is your evening service? Seven o'clock, but I thought that... You mean he'll come? You bet. What, what would mean, being a Christian mean if you didn't love your own brothers in the Lord? If we wait to find a perfect church, we may end up never going at all. Well, thanks again, and I'll bring something for that corn of yours. <laughs> thanks. Well, it's good to meet you, really. Good to meet you. We'll see you tonight. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Don't lose your visitor's badges. <laughs> Lord, do you know why I just love the happy church on the corner where the doors swing wide to welcome you? No, why? Because we get the best riffraff in town. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> we hope you did enjoy the short skit that we prepared for you this evening. Although, as Lori said, it was a bit exaggerated. I'm sure you did find a bit of humor in it. At least we hope you did. And we also...